Hello and welcome to another week of meals. I am starting off with a really delicious creamy tomato chicken pasta. This was kind of inspired by a recipe by The Cozy Cook, so I'm going to link that down below. Um, as per usual, if I do have a recipe, I'll have it in the video linked in the description box. Right now I'm just taking some extra virgin olive oil and I'm warming up some of the herbs here. I've got some Italian sort of spices. We've got um, oregano, basil, so a little bit of parsley, and I'm just warming that up, as I mentioned. In the back you can see that I've got some water starting to boil here so that I can uh, make the pasta. I'm adding some onion powder and garlic powder and I'm warming that up as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some fire roasted diced tomatoes to make up the tomato sauce. Now obviously you can go ahead and add fresh onions and garlic to this if you'd like. I was just being a bit lazy. So I used the dried spices, but there is the diced tomatoes here that I'm just gonna warm through. You can see it's, um, not there's not enough of it to make like a sauce so I am gonna add some chicken broth or what I'm gonna dub chicken broth it's basically chicken flavored bouillon I'm adding a bit of water and that's going to just increase the volume a bit Adding some tomato paste here to thicken things up so it's not too loose. I'm gonna let that go and simmer for a little bit so all of the flavors can kind of meld together and then I'll continue with the recipe. Once everything has had a chance to simmer for a little bit, I lower the heat and then I'm gonna add half a block of cream cheese. Now, I didn't have this at room temp, so it is kind of solid and you kind of see it's not gonna really mix as smoothly as I like, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. I like cream cheese and I cream cheese chunks don't bother me, but you'll see I'll switch to a whisk in just a little bit so that I can try to mix it more thoroughly. can see the sauce is thickened really, really nicely. Uh, it's more or less smooth. There are a few teeny tiny bits of cream cheese still in there, but again, it doesn't bother me. I'm gonna give it a little taste, and then I decide to add some more garlic powder, some, uh, what is that? That was oregano here. So just adjust to the way you want it to taste. And that is pretty much ready to have the chicken added to it. So I am using a rotisserie chicken. Uh, this is just some from Costco. I shredded it up and then I uh, just decided to add it. This was probably uh, was quite a bit. So maybe about three or four cups of shredded chicken. Again, just adjust it to how much chicken you want there. And that's since it's already cooked, just gonna warm through in the sauce, and then that's gonna be ready to plate with the pasta. Here you go, I am just adding some of the cooked spaghetti. Uh, you can use whatever shape pasta you want. You can use penne, you can use uh, rigatoni, whatever you like. Uh, just something to be able to carry this sauce and the chicken. So I'm actually just mixing it and combining it in this pan here, or the, the saucepan. And, and then that's going to be ready for dinner. And there you go, served with some shredded Asiago cheese and some more parsley. We have a sourdough bread with butter, and that was our dinner for the first evening. Next up, we've got pizza, but the twist to this is I am using a bottle of beer <laughs> that we had in the fridge. We've had, we're not really huge beer drinkers, but uh, we did have a bottle of leftover beer that I wanted to use up, and I found this recipe for uh, this pizza dough, and uh, the recipe will be linked down below, so if you want to try this, it does require a bottle of light beer, 
<laughs> I ended up using Stella because that's all we had. We had one bottle of Stella and one can of Miller Lite or something like that. <laughs> and I wanted to use it up. So I'm adding the dry ingredients here, mixing those together. Again, recipe down below so you get all of those, um, you know, just traditional stuff. There is no yeast in this, so that is one bonus. The, um, I think the, just whatever is in the beer is going to make this fluff up. So there is the bottle of Stella. It was just shy of the 12 ounces that was required in the recipe, but it worked out just fine actually. And you'll see as I mix this together, it is a really wet, sort of ragged, sticky dough. So it was kind of hard to work with um, with, ha with my hands. Uh, so if I had a little bit more liquid, I think it would have been even more challenging. So here you can see it's mixing up, it's bubbling really nicely. Um, and and this was actually a, a good yummy tasting dough. Uh, I'll comment more on that at the very end, but you can see I'm just taking a wooden spoon here and I'm mixing everything together per the instructions. just pulling out an old cutting board here and that's going to just be the surface where I work uh, the work the dough since I don't want to do it directly on the uh, kitchen table but you'll see it's just a really really wet dough and I'm this is going to be kind of a lot of clips that I'm showing you here but I wanted to show you how challenging it was to work with this particular dough I think the outcome was worth it but there are some things that I probably will do a little bit differently the next time. So I'm sprinkling with dough, as the instructions say, uh, so you can keep your hands kind of dry, but you'll see it just kind of keeps sticking to the cutting board. Um, and it says to just knead it two or three times. And I just couldn't knead the dough because it was just really soft and really wet. It just kept sticking to everything in my hands. I constantly was like running to the kitchen sink to kind of rinse my hand off um, to clean it up so that I can continue working with the dough. So it was really, really hard. So the two to three times knead the dough thing did not work for me. But eventually I got it to form a ball um, after a lot of additional flour. Okay, I'm feeling like the dough is ready. I'm gonna split it in two uh, because I've got two cast iron skillets that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna cook these in a skillet. And again, <laughs> just more flour so that it doesn't stick to anything. And then I am going to transfer these to the skillets. got some extra virgin olive oil to grease the skillets here. I'm just going to kind of brush that around so that the dough doesn't stick. Uh, the, the instructions or the recipe does does uh, instruct you to do this. I've got some cornmeal here that I'm just adding to the bottom of the skillet. Again, it is in the recipe and that's going to help again to just not um, not have it stick so much. I'm adding more cornmeal just because I had some a little bit of extra in my hands here. And um, then I am going to transfer the dough to the skillet. Sorry if you can hear my dogs. As per usual, they are in the room. <laughs> so I'm transferring here. Again, still really, really sticky. I'm gonna try to spread this around as much as possible. Um, but you'll see here that it's just really hard. What I end up doing is adding some olive oil to the top. And that was the key. So I think in the future, if and when I decide to do this again, I'm just going to add oil to the balls of dough to make it easier to handle. And that's how I'm going to do it in, uh, the next time around. And I probably will try to do this again. I really liked the flavor of it. I didn't think that you could taste the beer so much. Um, and I didn't get any negative feedback from the guys. Um, but you'll see at the end what it looks like. So I'm just going to spread this around uh, so that it's nice and even. And then I'm going to top it. Mm -hmm. 
So just working on Colin's pizza here, as usual, it is a plain cheese pizza. So I've got just some marinara sauce from Aldi that I'm just going to spread around, top it with some mozzarella cheese. I've got some shredded Asiago that I just, you know, still have laying around in the fridge, so I'm going to use that up. Uh, I do like to add a bit of oregano to kind of kick up that Italian flavor, and then that's going to go into the oven. So with the first pizza in the oven, I'm just going to work on the second one. It's in a slightly smaller skillet, so I have a slightly smaller ball of dough that I'm working with here. Just going to speed this up so you can see what we're doing. So I work this exactly the same as the first pizza and I'm just adding that um, the cornmeal to it. I've got the oil on top so it could help to uh, make it a little bit easier to spread out in the skillet and that again was the key for me. So, uh, so I'm going to top this a little bit differently. I'm not using uh, marinara sauce on this one, not a tomato based one. I'm just using some pesto because we've got some leftover jarred pesto in the fridge so I'm using that up and then I'm going to top it with some pepperoni and um, oh, the Asiago and mozzarella cheese, and then I've got some leftover diced green peppers. I, it's a very odd combination, this one, but still really yummy, um, and this made for a good, uh, a good alternative just to plain pizza. While that one is in the oven, I'm going to clean up a little bit. It was really, really a messy endeavor, <laughs> this particular uh, this particular recipe, or the way I worked it. I was just probably because I wasn't familiar with the recipe and it was my first time doing it, but I'm doing a little cleanup. This is the first cheese pizza coming out of the oven. You can see nice and toasty brown. Um, I let it go just a little bit, probably too long, but <laughs> it was still really good. Uh, the, again, the dough tasted pretty yummy. I will probably try to do this again, see if I could streamline the instructions, um, but you can see it did get brown on the bottom, and I think the skillet helped a lot. It didn't stick at all, and this is the second one coming out of the oven, just my uh, odd combination of ingredients here, but again, I slice this up, and you'll see what the dough looks like on the inside. There you go, you can see it rose quite well without yeast, like actually using like active, uh, active yeast, but those are the slices of pizza that I just kind of cut up, you just kind of went at it, just whatever you wanted to eat. Last meal I'm sharing with you is some corn beef. Uh, this is just gonna be in the crock pot. I picked up an extra corned beef brisket during the St. Patrick's Day um, holiday this year, and I'm just adding some veggies. I've got some radishes, some onion. I have chopped up carrots. I added some extra salt and pepper to the brisket along with the seasoning and a little bit of beef bouillon on top, and this is what it looks like after six hours on low. Um, I served it on top of white rice. This was really good, uh, really easy, you know, crock pot meal. Hope you guys enjoyed the recipes for this week. I know I only had a few, but they were really delicious. So thank you so much for taking the time to join me, and I will see you in the next video. Take care until then.